So I didn't, I didn't know that about the uh, Chrome push notifications. They don't actually have to be on your site when you push the notification. Right. right. What, how, do, how does that get triggered then? Um, uh, is, is it a user behavior, or are you just pushing it out? Uh, yeah, I think you know, we, we kind of see that um, every new CRM channel replicates the, the mistakes that the, the older channels have already cured. So email is now sent out in a very, very, very personalized way. Uh, uh -huh. But when push notifications started, everybody was doing mass push. Uh, mm -hmm. And now you see that push notifications get more targeted. And we currently see the same with browser push. So everybody's starting with just news blasts. But we are very confident that this will be fixed in the next year, uh, and then people will get segmented information. Typical is like you know a, a delivery estimate if you're at an um, e-commerce shop, or uh, like there's a new version of your product available, like an update uh, if you bought something on a software site or whatever. Hmm, interesting. Um, so I just want to ask a few questions before we uh, break for the evening. A lot of people are interested in the email best practices. Right. Um, that you talked about. Uh, going back to the emoji, the Unicode, there's some concern that, that ca when does that get spammy and are you more likely to go into a spam filter or folder because if you use emoji or things like that? Oh, yeah. How do you, how do you, how do you address that? We haven't seen any deliverability issues with uh, using emoji, but really? um, so, but that's a very good question because it might depend on country to country. Like if you have very large local ESPs uh, that aren't yet prepared for this kind of uh, characters and subject lines, uh, you might see an issue there. So what is a good way is always to monitor deliverability very closely, which you can do by uh, understanding if your opening rate differs a lot by receiving domain. Right? So, and that would be a good indicator if an ESP starts hating you for using something. It might be emoji, might be anything else, uh, uh, really. Yeah. So there is uh, also some questions around sending from personal email to recipient. Uh, is there any chance that will get blocked because it's not actually sent from the sender? Well, if you use an email marketing platform, it's never really sent from the sender. So, Good point. Um, uh, um, so what you typically do is you validate a domain, and you can give um, the, the ESPs of the users receiving emails different you know, levels of authenticity. And uh, the, the keywords you might want to look into are uh, you know, um, email authentication, DKIM, and SPIF, Sender Policy Framework. And, um, uh, those are typically like signals that you send out to reduce uh, the chance that you're perceived as spam. But again, um, they are all on a domain level, uh, so there's no issue with sending from a personal email address. Yeah, that's a very good point. And we, do, we actually do that at Moz all the time. Uh, it's our own company sending from personal, uh, yeah. personal accounts. It usually works pretty well. So as long as we're talking about spam folders, let's talk about the promotions folder. A uh, place that a lot of people don't want to end up. Do you have any tips to stay out of Gmail's promotion folder? That's a very good question. We never try to optimize uh, on staying out of that. So, no, I would so have to look into it. So it's it. not necessarily a bad place to be. Sorry? It's not necessarily a bad place to be. Yeah, I, I, can, I can, of course, imagine that you'd like to be considered a more personal email. But do you, like, if you send from personal email address, do you often end up in the promotions folder? It's, it's a it's a good question. I, so um, I promise to look into that and, and share that with the marketing festival team uh, of findings. Yeah. I, I actually don't know because when Gmail came out with the uh, promotions tab, I disabled it so everything goes. So yeah. I never know what, what goes in there. So here's a very popular question. You had, you had a lot of views up here, different aspects of customer data. Uh, what, do, what tools do you suggest to tie all customer data together and create a single customer view? Or do you use anything like that? Uh, well, this year, we started to do a lot with Power BI just because it's so cheap and affordable. Uh, so um, uh, it's fairly easy to connect data sources with it. Um, so that's what I would recommend at the moment as like a first place to test. Now, um, if, if I have a minute, I can basically share how we select technologies. Uh, because we, when we start to select technologies for clients, we rarely take the best technology for the moment. So what we typically do is we look at what technologies are affordable and what technologies at the same time have a very, very good traction in terms of user growth and feature growth. Uh, because then we believe that if we have an affordable solution that's developing really fast in the right direction, 
And if we build a strong bond with the, the, the supplier, we can help influence the roadmap. And if it doesn't do what we want now, it should be doing that in six months' time. Uh, while at the same time, if you go for something which is, which is really high-end now, you often pay very high licensing fees, but if they don't have enough traction, you are unsure if they will be around in two years' time. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, some questions here about, you had a lot of personalization in some of these examples. Um, are you not afraid that showing a user that you know too much about him might be kind of stalkerish? Does oh, that, yeah. how, where, where do you draw that line? I think, um, Especially if they hit a, 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 a URL you know, at a certain point, then they see a triggered email, and the email contains some personalized information. Like, are, how closely are you watching me? I think it's, uh, it's always a, a creative decision how much of that you reveal in the email creative. So uh, a typical example would be this, this software as a service platform where a user logs in, uh, you know, browses around a feature, uh, and then doesn't start to use it. And in that scenario, it might be a bit scary if you send out an email uh, like a minute later uh, and from a generic address and say, we've seen you've started to use this, but, but haven't, um, haven't really done it, so here's how to do it. But you might just send a little bit later from the email address of the account representative and say, look, we thought you might be interesting in this uh, very new feature. We've seen a lot of similar clients, uh, clients that are similar to you to m get a lot of value out of this. So I thought I might, uh, 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 I could explain this, how this works and why I think it's a good fit. And this seems helpful and not scary. Um, and if you put a little delay in it, it should be rarely yeah. tied to, to, that, uh, to, you know, to that, the, the, that specific event. Yeah. I think especially if you're showing some sort of generosity, you're showing value in the email. Right. right. And a typical good creative way uh, is to not say, OK, this is about you, is we've seen uh, clients similar to you see a lot of value in this, right? So this is, ah, OK, so they know me well, but they're not scarily monitoring me. OK. Do you want to play, uh, can we play speed round real quick? Sorry? Speed round. This is how it's going to work. I'm going to name a. Uh, problem, and you're going to name the, uh, the, your favorite tool or platform to solve the problem. OK. OK, so we, have, we had a bunch of questions about your favorite tools. Um, favorite tool for sending newsletters? I have to say MailChimp, because you can hack it very well to do a lot of amazing things, and it's still cheap. Yeah. Any second place? Second place? Um, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, in, in, there are a lot of very strong local providers. Like in right. Germany, we have Cleverreach, which is uh, a MailChimp knockoff, uh, essentially. Or, um, um, but there are also very advanced solutions that are amazing, like sail through, but they're really expensive. So you have to be a really large client to leverage it properly. Favorite tool for A-B testing? Um, again, we, we uh, like cheap tools, so we do a lot with Google website experiments oh, um, yep. uh, because, um, yeah, <laughs> it uh, can't get better than free. Um, mobile app notifications. Oh, that's very good. Uh, mobile app notifications, we really like Mixpanel. Uh, I explained a little bit our idea of actionable analytics. Uh, so you, you mean push notifications, by yeah. that, right? So, um, and uh, that has push notifications built in, so it's very easy to do that. If you look for a specific solution, I think Kahuna is amazing. OK. Uh, very good. Uh, OK, final question uh, for you. How about sending birthday emails two days before the birthday instead of two days after? If it's culturally OK, in Germany, this would be considered rude and a bad luck sign. Really? Uh, if you congratulate someone before the birthday. Oh, no. Yeah. Because so they, they, they may not make the <laughs> birthday? I don't know. I don't know where it comes from, but that's, that would be a reason why we wouldn't do it in you know, the, the German cultural context. But if it's, it should work just as well, right? It's uh, about avoiding you know, a crowded inbox on the birthday. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. OK, well, we're going to call it. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insight today. Thank Bjorn you so much, Stuart. guys. Thank you so much.